Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's episode we're going to be traveling 20 years into the past to take a look at pocket PCs. Oh yeah, you guys remember these? These were like all the rage back in the early 2000s and that is where this device comes from. This is the Toshiba E310 Pocket PC and it was very generously donated to me by Ashley. So thank you very much for making this video possible. Along with this, Ashley sent most of the original documentation, I believe. We have the user's guide and a few other things in here, a quick start guide. We'll dive into this in a moment, as well as a charging cable and a docking cradle, which is going to be really useful for setting this thing up in uh, later on in this video. Video. Now, when it comes to pocket PCs or PDAs, whatever you want to call these devices, and this channel, we've not talked a whole lot about them, aside from in passing. The last dedicated video I did on a device like this was back in 2017 on this Siemens Windows Mobile device. This runs Windows Mobile 2003, and it's also a phone, as you can see by the answer and end call buttons and the singular logo up there. And this, if I haven't already mentioned it, runs Microsoft. Microsoft Pocket PC 2002. Now you may wonder, what's the difference between Pocket PC and Windows Mobile? Well, the name, that's about it. Obviously there were new features and things introduced in Windows Mobile 2003, but for all intents and purposes, this was just a rebranding of Pocket PC, just a newer version of it. And then it took on the Windows Mobile name for a few releases, and then by the time Windows Phone 7 came along, they rebranded it to Windows Phone, and then when Windows 10 Mobile came out, they rebranded it back to Windows Mobile. Uh, you know, classic just corporate rebranding stuff. It, it's just, you just have to accept it by now. But yeah, so this was the last version. The operating system that this runs was the last version to be called Pocket PC. In terms of pricing, this device sold for $400 back in 2002, which means that it's comparable to something like the Palm M515. Now, if you were a Palm user, you'd probably want to upgrade to the M515 or another one of the Palm PDAs from this time to get that same user interface that you're used to. But maybe you were looking for a change and wanted to try out Pocket PC. Well, this device could do that for you. Maybe you were a previous Pocket PC user, you're coming from Pocket PC 2000, for example, and want to upgrade to the newer operating system. This device could do that for you as well. In terms of specifications, this thing has a 206 megahertz ARM-based CPU, 32 megs of RAM, and a 240 by 320 display uh, that is 3.5 inches in size. Now taking a look at the front of the device itself, under that display, you've got four buttons here which are reprogrammable. Um, they are by default set to open up calendar, tasks, your homepage, and contacts. You've got your navigation controls right here. On the left side, you've got uh, another slider here that can be used as a navigation control. You can, you know, move down and up to select things and press to uh, perform the equivalent of a tap. You've got another button up here, which is reprogrammable as well. On the right side, we've got your stylus storage area. And on the bottom, we have both your docking connector, if you want to plug this thing into the cradle, and the power connector, if you want to charge it without using the cradle. We also have this switch here, which will cut power to the battery, which is useful for if you want to cut power to the battery, pretty much. On the back here, on the top, we've got your SD card slot, which has a 16 meg Toshiba card in here, which might actually be one that came with this or was sold alongside it. I just see the Toshiba name, so that's a good guess. Or it could have been bought, you know, separately, like a month after, or, you know, who knows. Um, we've got your Windows powered logo and the branding and everything down here. Now we can also um, open this thing up because I had to take this apart to remove the battery because the battery uh, unfortunately is rather bloated. So I wanted to get that out of here and it was causing problems getting this thing to power on. So this is what it looks like on the inside. Now, aside from the device itself, I mentioned that actually included some documentation as well. So we'll briefly take this out and go through it. We've got the user's guide here, which what I find interesting about this is on the back here, uh, on the very last page, that's not blank. They've actually taken stickers and taped over 
some of the specifications that were, I guess, printed incorrectly. So this right here, the external dimensions and weight, is a sticker that's put over the top. And then this right here is like blanking out everything under the type of the battery. And yeah, I find that really interesting. So I've never seen this in a manual before. I guess it was cheaper than just reprinting the entire manual and just getting these stickers and having people apply them or some sort of machine just stick them on here. But uh, yeah, so that's one of the most interesting things I've seen in a manual in a long time. Now this here is some sort of carrying case that was either included with the device or was sold alongside it. Either way, we have it here. We've got that safety instruction manual, which we're totally gonna read through and familiarize ourselves with. We have our registration card. Would you look at that? You've got some more like regulatory stuff, static electricity in your Toshiba Pocket PC, backing up and restoring data. Notice for when using data backup. You've got your master end user license agreement, one year limited warranty, and your little quick start guide here or your quick start card rather which uh opens up like this into a sort of mini poster kind of thing and it tells you you know what oh here you go what's in the box let's see if that's soft case so that came with the box also things that we're missing we don't have the companion cd and yeah i think that's the only thing that we're missing so yeah hopefully that's been archived and it's online somewhere because uh, that will contain at least i would think the software to uh sync uh, where is it here? To sync this uh, with your computer, which was a, a common feature. Pretty much every PDA line uh, from this time had this. Palm had it. You had, I think it was Hot Sync, it was called. Um, yeah, so that way you could easily transfer data between your computer and your uh, PDA. That's pretty much everything. Let's go ahead and uh, take this guy out of its case here and plug it into our docking cradle and we will explore this thing and take a look at the software. So this right here is the Today screen in Pocket PC 2002, and it's the main interface that you'll see when you first turn this device on. And it's just designed to give you pretty much a bird's eye view of how your day's looking. So you've got your date and time up here, which is, as you can see, not correct. Owner information, any upcoming appointments, any unread messages, and what tasks that you need to do today. On the top left here, we've got the start button, which just like in you know Windows on your computer, will bring up a list of applications. We'll dive into that in a moment. Up here, you've got your volume settings, and you can tap on the clock up here to see your next upcoming appointment. Uh, and that's just accessible from anywhere in the system, which is really nice. Um, and then you've got a new button down here, which you can tap to create uh, like a new uh, Excel workbook or an email message or a Word document just right from here. You can even add a new appointment if you want to. So yeah, you can see that the interface is kind of designed to look like Windows XP. Not exactly, it's not like they took the Luna theme and brought it over here or anything, because this is definitely its own thing. But they've updated a lot of the icons, they've brought over the new Windows flag up here. So yeah, what I figured we'd do is just go through here, we'll take a look at the programs and just kind of use this thing as if it were a 2002, as if this date was correct up here. So let me go ahead and show you the, the different interfaces here. So this is the today view, but you've also got this home button down here. It's one of the uh, fixed buttons, which again, these are all customizable. And you press this, and this is kind of like your all programs view. So it gives you a list of all the programs on your computer um, or on your pocket PC rather that you can't get to from the start menu, right? Not everything's gonna be able to show up in here. But if you click on programs, I believe it brings you to the same view. Uh, let's see, no, this is a different view. So this is your uh, pr pretty much everything in that programs folder. Whereas this is all the, the programs actually on your computer or on your pocket PC. I'm gonna probably say computer a couple of times here because I'm just so used to saying it. Uh, but it's called the home view. And so you've got tabs down here, main, you've got programs and games, kind of like program groups from Windows 3.1. And then you have your list of running applications. This is like a task manager, which is really nice because like I got Windows Media Player running right here. You say I wanna close that, I just go up here, I uh, hold on it and then I stop and then that will uh, kill the application. I can even just do a uh, stop all as you can see there and it will uh, stop all of the applications 
from running in the background so you can clear up memory that way and very very nice it was one of the neat things about windows mobile is uh there's kind of some power user focused stuff in here uh, not only can you view the list of running programs and kill all of them but you can also view the file system structure and like go into the windows folder yes it was called the windows folder on here and you know you can you can browse all the all the system files so um, we're here in the File Explorer, which it's funny that it's called File Explorer because that would later be Windows Explorer's updated name. Um, but yeah, so here we are, My Device. You got My Documents, Program Files, Temp, and Windows. We can go into the Windows folder. And I mean, here you go. We can just scroll down here and view all the <laughs> all the program files. Um, now, in terms of deleting stuff, I don't really think... Uh, yeah, so it's it's definitely made to where you can't delete stuff here, uh, which is nice because you don't want people coming in here and accidentally deleting core system files. Now, in terms of user interface design, just like this top bar here, which is pretty much always going to be viewable, you have this task bar down here, which is going to update depending on what application you're in. So like when we're in File Explorer here, you've got uh, these three options down here to swap between like where you're browsing for files. This second option, if I had an SD card in here, it would allow me to browse files on the SD card. Card. This should let me browse stuff on the network if I typed in my, uh, you know, whatever network path I wanted to connect to. Uh, I could just browse files on there, which is pretty useful. And this right here is how you change your input method, which will be more appropriate to talk about that when we're in like Pocket Word or Pocket Excel. Um, so we'll just get rid of the keyboard. Um, right now it's set to the keyboard input method. So you can tap this here to show and hide the keyboard. And then up here, when you're in an application, you'll have this X button that will allow you to quit out of it. And now we're back to task manager. I can quit out of that. And now we're back to programs. I can quit out of that. So it's like everything's just layered. It opens up on top of each other to where when you close it, it brings you back to the first program. So uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and uh, do what we were doing before. Go to the home view here and take a look at some of the programs. So under main, you have Calculator, Calendar, Contacts, Inbox, Internet Explorer, or Pocket IE, Windows Media, Notes, Pocket Excel, Pocket Word, and that right there is your uh, your task view, or your tasks program, rather. If we go under Programs here, we've got some additional programs, File Explorer, Data Backup, and Infrared Receive, because this does have an IR receiver on here to where if you really wanted to, <laughs> to blast stuff over infrared uh, to this device and wait however long that's going to take, you can do do that and then under games we have of course solitaire because it just wouldn't be windows without solitaire and i really like how they included a pocket version of this you can change the card backs as well that is a neat thing that was uh brought over here like from the the main windows version of solitaire so you got six different card backs there you can change your uh, scoring method if you want to draw three cards or just one uh, you can turn off the timer display status keep cumulative score and yeah, like let's select, uh, I don't know, this one here looks pretty cool. Yeah, there you go. So that's that's solitaire. Always love me some solitaire. But let's go back to main here and open up uh, Pocket Word. Now, I know that I would not want to sit here and write a five paragraph essay on this thing. In fact, that's something I mentioned in my Windows Mobile 2003 video as well. Uh, that would kind of suck. But that's not what Pocket Word and Pocket Excel were really designed for. I mean, I guess theoretically you could sit here and like type out uh, every single letter individually here on the touchscreen. And uh, you know what, we're gonna leave it that way. I meant to type O, but it typed zero. We're gonna leave it that way. These were mainly for making like last minute edits and stuff. Like if you notice like, oh crap, this document that I'm gonna print out, like take it to the office on here and then bring it to my computer in the office. It's got like a spelling mistake. Let me just quickly open it up and like I'm in the car and let me just change that. Uh, it's also meant for like reading over stuff. You can open up like a Word doc in here and just read over it. Pocket Excel is kind of the same thing. Now in terms of the input methods, let me go to the start menu here and go to settings because this gives you a little bit more information uh, regarding each of these input methods. So obviously you've got keyboard. You can also change the uh, key size if you want to. So we open this up and this would actually probably be better because the keys are like much larger. Um, so yeah, you can't obviously fit as much stuff on the screen. Um, it's nice that the keyboard does not like 
get any larger in terms of like that it takes up more space here it stays the same size but it like moves the numbers to this area here we'd have to tap that to get to the numbers and all that but yeah i'm gonna definitely leave it on large keys um but then you've got these three other input methods block recognizer letter recognizer and transcriber so block recognizer is actually using graffiti gestures from palm so if you were you know a palm pilot user and you were familiar with graffiti you could just set your input method to this and you could write out those same graffiti gestures and this would be able to you know interpret what you're saying which i think is really awesome uh, you've got some options here too if well there's no options i guess it's just uh it's just super basic the next input method is letter recognizer this is utilizing instead of graffiti it's utilizing jots from cic which funnily enough was actually licensed to palm to create graffiti too. This was just before that happened. Uh, so yeah. Now in terms of the input interfaces themselves, we can go down here to the keyboard icon and we'll change that to block recognizer. And yeah, you just write out just like on the Palm Pilots here, how you had this little you know area at the bottom where you would write out all your graffiti gestures. You just do that right here and the system would interpret them and you know transfer them to whatever text it was supposed to to transcribe it to um and then if we swap over here to the letter recognizer you see it looks a little bit different um, but it's kind of the same idea you just write your letters here and if it could figure out what i was writing it would uh it would you know transfer or rather transcribe that and speaking of transcribing here's the transcriber now this is the most uh interesting input method out of all of these because it actually does not have a specified area on the screen that you're supposed to write into this just lets you write anywhere on the screen in cursive in print or both cursive and print at the same time you can write numbers you have some gestures here and it's just like freestyle pretty much like we'll just hit okay here and i'll show you what i mean uh, you do have some options at least i think if we go in here um let me get out of that we go into options here uh you can turn off sound uh show that intro screen which was that thing that came up that like told you hey this is the transcriber and this is what it does uh you can turn off showing the icon bar you can change the inking color and the uh, width of it let me open up this same document and now all i do is just write anywhere on the screen um oh i think i need to <laughs> am i in the right yeah transcriber okay it's going to come up again we'll hit okay and i should be able just to right yep so there's an m which it thinks is an n okay uh luckily we can just backspace by doing a single line backwards uh at least maybe there we go uh so let's write m i'm kind of at an angle here uh when i'm doing this so it's not going to be i'm not going to be able to write super well but uh, yeah, let's just get rid of all of this i mean that is so clearly an m come on guys like there's no way that's my handwriting I mean, my handwriting isn't super great, but I mean, come on, that's so clearly an M. Okay, whatever. Let's just say, uh, oh, I, <laughs> it thinks that's a <laughs> question mark, question mark. Okay. Yeah, that's the other thing. If you backspace too rapidly and just draw a bunch of lines, it'll start to think that's a gesture and then it'll just throw up question marks uh, when it, it's like, I don't know what that is. Or maybe this is the gesture for a question mark. Uh, no, it thinks that's a J. Okay, because yeah, you can write like a question mark. That's a really terrible question mark. 7R, yeah, that's really good. Um, let's try that. There you go. So it realizes that, that is a question mark. And you don't have to do it one letter at a time, by the way. You saw there when I typed, like, when it came up 7J, I thought that was two separate letters. I can write, like, M, J, D. Uh, it's really bad. N, T, D. Okay, let me change my position again so I can get... I'm, like... Yeah, this angle is not, the way I had to set this up is not really accurate. I'm not directly behind this. I'm like at an angle. So writing this is not super ideal, but let me just get over here. <laughs> NSD, N dash SD. Okay. Yeah, you guys get the point. It clearly does not like my handwriting, but you know, whatever. Um, you've got MSN Messenger on here, which is really useful. So you could sign into your MSN account and, you know, message on here. But yeah, so we took a look at the games, took a look at Pocket Excel and Pocket Word. Um, the calculator here, I mean, it doesn't look anything like the Windows calculator. It's definitely more tailored for a touch user interface, which is nice, but yeah, you know, there it is. Microsoft Reader is a PDF reader. Actually, that's not the case. This specifically was designed to read eBooks. 
But there was another program that I guess I was thinking of called Microsoft Reader that was a PDF reader. That just came later on. And yes, it was under the same name. I just love when companies do that. They like reuse names for completely different products, even if they are like kind of related. I think what we'll do next is put the stylus aside for a moment and take a look at some of the other ways you can interact with this user interface. You've got these buttons down here, which this essentially acts like a D-pad or arrow keys where, you know, you can just scroll through all of your programs here and you can just i believe press it uh to launch the program yeah so here we are in uh, pocket excel and then again these four buttons are reprogrammable so that is done by i was reaching for the stylus i do kind of want to do this uh well whatever let's just use the stylus to get to it uh that is accessed from the settings program here if we go in here and we go to buttons we can change what each of these buttons do. So button one is this one here, is the calendar. Let's maybe change that to, uh, I believe we tap on it here. Uh, no, we don't, okay. Oh yeah, it's it's right here. You're supposed to change it from this drop down menu. So let's maybe make button one uh, infrared receive. Yeah, why not? So we'll set that. And then you gotta make sure to tap okay up here. And now when I press button one, it'll open up infrared receive. The other way of interacting with this system is with this little wheel here on the left side, because you can, you know, rotate it down to scroll through things, rotate it up to go backwards. Yeah, I can just press this in and it will launch the program. Now let's talk customization for a little bit. If we go to the menus option here in the settings, area this is where you can uh change what's in the start menu so let's say you want to get everything off of here and we go up to the start menu and you can see yeah it's definitely pretty bare bones we've got the folders here the find and help information uh and then this right here is like your your most recently accessed programs uh so they just kind of just like in the regular windows start menu it just kind of auto populates with uh with things so there you go going back into the menus you can also change what appears in the new menu that's the button down here at the bottom on the today screen so you can disable some of that stuff if you don't use it there is a way to change the theme i'm just trying to remember where that is oh maybe it's under today view yes here it is so this is where you can change the theme so there's the default and there's fire so here it is it looks uh fire <laughs> God, yeah, it, uh, I mean, whatever, you know, it changes the, the color a little bit. I think it looks cool. It changes the, the wallpaper here. Now you can go back into here if we go to, uh, well, let me actually get back to settings here. Um, you are able to change this stuff a little bit more. Uh, first of all, you can get additional themes. Like if you find one on your computer and want to transfer it over here, uh, using the docking cradle or by just using the SD card or if you want to beam it over here using the wonderful IR receiver and wait 20 years for it to actually show up uh, you could do that as well you can also use a photo as the background if you had one on here you could browse for it and all your pictures would show up here and you could select a photo so there is some customizability which is definitely nice and yeah that's pretty much everything that I can think of that I wanted to show you, but we're not done yet because I've got something on this SD card that I think you guys might enjoy, um, at least if it actually worked properly. Unfortunately, it does not, but we're going to answer the age-old question that you must uh, by law answer when taking a look at devices like this, and that is, does it run Doom? And the answer is not really. Um, let me go to the uh, SD card here, and we've got a version of Doom for Pocket PC. Now, what's really funny is there was actually an official version of Doom ported to Pocket PC that you could buy. Like, it was published and everything. You could go out and buy it. Um, this right here is some third-party version by whoever owns Jimmy.com, Doom for Windows CE. And this was designed specifically, at least the, the file that I downloaded, it says Doom underscore IPAC, which is referring to the HP IPAC, which was another PDA that was available around this time. And that's what I assume it was specifically designed for. Unfortunately, it doesn't work on here. Um, first of all, I've got the shareware Doom1.wad here. You just select it, it will just crash. Um, you have to actually select uh, browse and then manually browse for the wad. You see it'll just crash there. But if I go back in here and uh, go to custom wad file and then select the same wad and hit OK, it will actually launch Doom. 
So I guess you could say it technically runs Doom, it just doesn't allow you to play the game, because as you'll see in here, it will load up Doom, and, you know, we'll hit the center button here, and there we go. I mean, we've got, <laughs> we have the sound as well coming out here. The speaker on this thing is god-awful. I'll show you that in a moment, or rather let you hear it. Um, you would not want to use this speaker for, like, anything other than hearing, like, the confirmation beeps that the program or that the operating system gives you when you're going through and, like, opening up the start menu and stuff. It's pretty bad. Um, but if we go to new game here, so let me just select that, and we'll do Knee Deep in the Dead, and we'll just set it on hurt me plenty, that's fine. It'll just crash. It, it's really unfortunate. I've tried multiple different wads. I've tried pretty much everything that you can do other than getting the official Doom client, which I was not able to uh, source anywhere. Um, so yeah, we're just kind of, we're just kind of stuck with this. But like I said, I guess it technically runs Doom, just not, uh, just not completely. But I figured, you know, we may not be able to play Doom, but let's at least get that experience somewhat. So that's why you probably saw I copied over one of the sound files, one of the pieces of music from Doom at Doom's Gate. And we're going to launch it here in Windows Media Player. And let me just pause it here. Uh, this is a really low quality MP3 of this. Um, I could not get like a 320 kilobits per second file to play in Windows Media Player on here. It just refused to play it. So you see it's at 74, <laughs> it's at 74 kilobits per second. Um, so yeah, and that combined with, I mean, again, the speaker on here is god awful. Even if you put like a super high quality file that was able to play, uh, you would not get that quality from here because it's just pretty bad. Let's just play it here. So yeah, like I said, you definitely don't want to... <laughs> You definitely don't want to really listen to anything on this. There you have it, guys. That is the Toshiba Pocket PC E310 and a little demo of Microsoft Pocket PC 2002. I want to give a huge thank you to Ashley once again for donating this to the channel. Really appreciate it. And a huge thanks to all you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this one, be sure to give it a thumbs up, get subscribed, all that good stuff. And as always, I will see you all in the next video.